So it leaves that responsibility. So that's 4.1, 4.2. Is there some uh, correct number of program outcomes for uh, specific programs, or how is the balance between? No, they do not have to be four categories. Okay, there don't have to be any specific number in each category. Sometimes you might begin if you're starting from scratch and not starting from here, although. You don't need to do that, but if you start, um, sometimes you just list them all and see how they fall into categories and put them into categories. Okay. We'll see what else <coughs> occur. But the idea of the structure here is that, but for engineers, two, three, and four are the same no matter what kind of engineering you do. And one is where it's going to be different. When you identify your technical knowledge and reasoning, and you will see in this syllabus that you're looking at, they're not defined. Okay? You don't do a lot of that because it's up to every program to know what their basic knowledge is, what their advanced knowledge is, and oh, and starting with the, the common, the mathematics and science, the core that's not yet engineering, but that every student needs to know. So this is your knowledge base. But when you start with the skills and attitudes or attributes, so two and three, so I would say that if you are doing, trying to construct a, oh, let me distinguish the word syllabus, this is often confusing. Because everywhere in the world, and everywhere in the United States, except MIT, and except the aerospace program at MIT, uses the word syllabus, what do you use the word syllabus for? For the subject contents. What you give to the students. It's that what's going on in the course, what are the expectations, what are the assignments, how are they going to be graded, that's your course syllabus. Somehow, and I say this, I hope no one ever reports this back to Ed Crowley. Ed Crowley decided the word that he was going to use for this list of outcomes was a syllabus. And we kept that. Okay? But this is not the same kind of syllabus. When we talk about the CDIO syllabus, it's the list of program outcomes. If you're going to develop this kind of list for something that's not engineering, You still need your knowledge base. What's the knowledge? What's the knowledge in the discipline? This is going to be the same. You might not call it technical knowledge, but it's going to be your disciplinary content. What's the knowledge in the discipline? Students are still going to need these personal and professional skills. So this will remain pretty close to that. You can have a category of that. Interpersonal skills, no matter what program. And what happens here? This is your professional practice. Okay. Um, oh, we didn't have a very talking about your syllabus and we didn't have the yet. That's okay. So what we'll look at after coffee break, this CDIO syllabus, now again, this is a little bit different from what you're getting because this is still version one. Version two is just hot off the press in June, which is why it hasn't made it into the slides yet. This was just approved in, uh, at the annual meeting in June. But you have here, here are the four categories.
Aparecemos muy estudiosos. level. 
For example, engineering, reasoning, and problem solving. You would expect that to be there. Okay? And that comes from, from that's aligned with ABET. Uh, leading and working in groups, that's aligned with ABET, or ABET is aligned with that. Communicating effectively, that's aligned with ABET. Okay. Um, designing complex engineering systems, so they're at that level, but with no more specific detail <coughs> than that. Okay. It, it, it will be this year, I'll need to have a, a traceability map between ABET and and CDIO, you have? Yes, see, and during the break I can try to look that up. Because, where did we get this list to start with? Okay. We looked at all of the existing documents that talked about what was important for engineers. Mm -hmm. So we started moving them to ABET, mm -hmm. see what they were requiring. Mm -hmm. For us in aerospace we went to Boeing. Mm -hmm. Boeing had published a list of desirable attributes for an engineer. Okay. Again, what are they? A background in mathematics and physics, okay. design, communication, leading teamwork, so we looked at those. And we looked at them, we looked internally at the university, what was, the, what was MIT saying about what was important? So yes, we did. And in the first report about the syllabus, we do a mapping. And what we've shown is that th this list has everything that's in ABEC and more. And we have things in here that are not. But is it in the book? It is in the book. Yes. Thank you. Because I was going to try to figure it out online, but that would be the fastest way to show that. It's in the book. In another point, do you recommend to prepare a kind of uh, cross-ref document between these syllabus and the lectures of the program? The courses of the oh, program? Oh, yes. This is what we're going to do tomorrow. Okay. Oh. Show what this looks like in your courses, <laughs> which is what you've done in your map, yes. your original map. Yeah. This is just a little bit more detail. But it's, yes. Yes, because that will be the next step. Once you have the outcomes, you map them to the curriculum. And you show where does it where do I find that in the curriculum? Yes. And you have to do that for accreditation. Okay. As well as for um, for that. So um, but again, my recommendation is, and you've already done a great deal of this work. But if you are developing this for the first time, you know, you can start with a blank page and say, okay, what are the outcomes for my program? Okay. But a lot of people have already done a lot of work with this. So I say, particularly if it's engineering. But this was useful to me when I did the pastoral theology. But what did I do in the pastoral theology? For those who weren't here yesterday, that was another hat that I wear. Um, I went to the documents. There are a lot of documents that have been published about what kind of skills and knowledge do you need for this profession. So I didn't start here. I started with all those documents and secretly I also used the engineer. <laughs> Add to it. Raise them to a level. There may be something in the third level that for you, see, I see lifelong learning. That was one of your major competencies. And you may not want it buried here in 2.4. You may want to call this 2.6 lifelong learning. When I did this with um, Unitech in Honduras. Their first draft, and I don't know where it is now, they were already up to 2.11. They had a lot of personal and professional skills. I think it's 2.11 of them is probably too many and could be collapsed a little. But for the first draft, 
I said to them, leave all 11 and let's map them and see how they how it works out. Okay? But, you know, start here, add, subtract. This is going to look, you know, maybe at this level you don't want to do all of that, but certainly you're going to have teamwork and communication. Um, and for example, this is going to change, this might change for you. Oh no, English will be a foreign language for you. Um, the, the interesting thing in the development here, this was first developed the first couple of years uh, before the CDIO group met even for the first time, was developed at MIT. And at MIT, they only had 3.1, 3.2. They didn't even have a 3.3, which tells you a lot about the U.S. <laughs> we don't think that communication in a foreign language has the same importance. But as soon as we got to our first um, cooperative groups, were well, three schools from Sweden, this surface. Terribly important if you're in Europe and, or any place else in the world. Okay. We're English. So uh, communication. And so it, it um, and so these are adjustments that 